And um, now we're gonna actually move uh, to our first report. Um, and this will be the first report of many that you'll see throughout the next days of the plenary. And uh, this first report is coming from the office of the chairman. Uh, this is the office that provides leadership to all the departments and offices in our movement. So we wanna welcome with lots of applause, um, comrade Alike Ngoma, the assistant administrator at the office of the chairman and Akinge Mayeli, the chief of staff at the office of the chairman. Uhu, comrades. Uhu, King Gay. Uhu, Olivia. Uhu. Maybe we're having trouble with unmuting, so let's see if we can. Yeah. Uhu, got it now. Uhu, comrades. Uhu. Let me just move this. Uhuru again, I want to welcome you and everyone joining us for the third plenary of the 7th Congress of the African People's Socialist Party and say that this will be the report from the office of Chairman Omalia Shetela, leader of the African nation. Next slide. We want to first salute our leadership, Chairman Omali Ishatella and Deputy Chair Ona Zene Ishatella for their relentless dedication to the struggle for liberation of Africa and African people worldwide. In addition, we salute the entire leadership of the National Central Committee of the African People's Socialist Party. Uhuru. Next slide. The theme of this year's plenary, relentless 50 years of leadership toward African redemption is extraordinary. Chairman Omali Ishitala himself has spent over 50 years leading Africans and countless revolutionaries. Now, let's watch a short piece titled From Garvey to Omali. more than 100 years of history of our revolutionary struggle for African liberation and unification is concentrated in the relentless leadership of Chairman Omali Ishitela and the African People's Socialist Party. In the 1920s, Marcus Garvey, an African born in Jamaica, built the largest ever anti-colonial, anti-imperialist, revolutionary organization of African workers in history. The Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League recruited over 11 million Africans worldwide in the United States, Africa, the Caribbean, Europe and elsewhere. Their slogan demand was Africa for the Africans, those at home and abroad. Garvey's movement was not a struggle for integration into the colonial capitalist system, but for African independence and black power. It was an assault on the colonial mode of production the foundation of the parasitic capitalist world economy built on our enslavement, dispersal, pillage, rape, and theft of resources that holds the world's oppressed in its vicious grip up to now. 
the UNIA built dynamic, anti-colonial economic and cultural institutions such as the Black Cross nurses, factories, grocery stores, restaurants, a printing press, a steamship company called the Black Star Line, and its own incipient military force known as the African Legion. Garvey and the UNIA represented a magnificent offensive against imperialism. It was for this reason that the U.S. government and its neo-colonial lackeys, including the NAACP and W.E.B. Du Bois, moved to crush Garvey and the UNIA. In 1925, the U.S. government sentenced Marcus Garvey to five years in prison. Two years later, he was deported to Jamaica, derailing the significance of the UNIA. In the aftermath of Garvey's imprisonment, the overall African liberation movement was reduced to a defensive posture. Instead of fighting for power, assimilationist, petty bourgeois stooges such as Dubois begged for the right to integrate into the colonial capitalist system. The civil rights movement of the 1950s was a continuation of this defensive posture following the elimination of Garvey, who had built the most effective vehicle for the advancement of anti-colonial politics for Africans and oppressed peoples anywhere in the world. Off of the civil rights era, there was the reemergence of the Garvey-influenced movement for black power. With the rise of SNCC, Malcolm X, the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, JOMO, and others, our anti-colonial struggle began to resurface. Again, as with Garvey in the 1920s, our movement for freedom and independence came under attack. The U.S. government's counterinsurgency war crushed the Black Revolution of the 1960s. They jailed and assassinated our leaders. They murdered Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, and over 30 members of the Black Panther Party. They tortured and assassinated Patrice Lumumba in Congo. They overthrew Kwame Nkrumah in Ghana. They murdered Robert Sobukwe in occupied Azania. They wounded, then assassinated Che in Bolivia. Their intention was to destroy forever the revolutionary will of African and other colonized peoples to fight for power and control over our own lives. Throughout all of this death and mayhem, there was one thread that could not be broken. One emergent force who fought relentlessly to keep the revolution alive. That force is Chairman Omalia Shetela and the African People's Socialist Party. Though Garvey died in London, England, today, the cry of Africa for Africans continues to resonate because the party is here. Lumumba, Sabukwe, and Krumah are dead, but the African Revolution is alive today in Africa because the party is here. The history of the African Revolution is concentrated within our 50 year history. Malcolm X, Huey Newton, and Fred Hampton are dead, but the African Revolution lives today throughout the US, Europe, Africa, and the world because the party is here. In the face of brutal, dangerous conditions, including assassinations, arrests, beatings, and jailings, the party, under the leadership of Chairman Omalia Shetela, has been the relentless force rebuilding and maintaining the focus of the international African struggle against colonial domination for the total liberation of Africa and African people.
It is our Chairman Omalia Shatella, whose relentless leadership over the past more than 50 years gives life to the famous declaration by Fred Hampton. You can kill the revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution. It was our chairman who worked to solve every unresolved problem left behind in the debris of the broken and defeated black revolution of the 1960s. Chairman O'Malley developed the advanced revolutionary theory, strategy, and organization to tackle every question, including the need for revolutionary theory, the political basis for the Vanguard Party, the role of the electoral arena in the struggle for African freedom, the struggle for reparations as a function of the revolution. question of white people's responsibility to join in overturning the parasitic colonial capitalist system by working under the party's leadership. And strategic unity with all colonized and oppressed peoples fighting for liberation from the yoke of imperialist domination. Garvey's African fundamentalism of the 20th century is Chairman Omali Yeshitela's African internationalism of today. The UNIA is gone, but the African People's Socialist Party and the African Socialist International are alive and growing. We salute the relentlessness of the chairman and the party on its historic 50th anniversary. Not only the past struggle, but the future of African people is found in the leadership of Chairman Omalia Shatella and the African People's Socialist Party. Africa will be free, and African people will be self-determining once again. As Garvey once predicted, when our party is victorious, the red, black, and green flag will fly from the hilltops of Africa. Garvey lives. Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. One Africa, one nation. Long live Chairman Omali Ishitela. Long live the African People's Socialist Party. Uhuru, um, can we go? Yes, thank you. Chairman Amalia Shatella has been coined the last man standing from the day he ripped down that hideous, degrading mural from the walls of City Hall in St. Petersburg, Florida in 1966. Chairman Amalia Shatella, then known as Joseph Waller, 
has never stopped fighting for freedom for African people everywhere. Next slide. Mobilized in his youth by anti-colonial movements around the world and the struggle for black liberation in the US, he has dedicated his life to, united, to uniting and liberating Africa and African people everywhere. Next slide. Some of his many accomplishments throughout his 50 years of revolutionary work to unite Africans uh, worldwide include in 1996, being the Florida organizer for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, where he was, of which he was a member when he ripped down the mural of C uh, St. Pete City Hall, 1968, forming JOMO, the Junta of Militant Organizations, as well as launching the Burning Spear newspaper, 1972, forming the African People's Socialist Party. And uh, he also sat on the first African Liberation Day Committee in the United States. Next slide. 1976, he formed the African People's Solidarity Committee, extending the African Revolution into the belly of the beast and uh, extending the demand for reparations to African uh, people into the white communities. In 19, white community, in 1979, formed the African National P Prisons Organization. 1982, uh, built the first international tribunal on reparations for African people in the US. And he also formed the African National Reparations Organization. Uh, and it was this process that made reparations a household word. Next slide. In 1991, he founded the National People's Democratic Uhuru Movement in Chicago, Illinois, uh, later to become the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Uh, where in his report to the founding convention, the chairman stated, uh, quote, the fact that NPDM is under the, le the leadership of our revolutionary party is a mark of political maturity for the oppressed domestically colonized African workers of the US, which holds true today. In 2004, he consolidated the African Socialist International in London, England. 2006, he was a speaker uh, he, we, he was on a speaking tour of Southern Africa uh, where he met with Namibian revolutionary leader and former president Sam Nujoma and founded the, um, also in 2006, founded the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project. In 2010, he was honored by the University of South Florida at the unveiling of um, a special collection of his writings. Next slide. 2015. He was the speaker at the Dialogue of Nations conference in Moscow, Russia. Um, he was also in 2015, the keynote at the annual IREFM FM sponsored Marcus Garvey celebration in Jamaica, where he spoke to a crowd of over 5,000 people. And uh, this celebration is actually the largest Marcus Garvey celebration held in the world. In 2019, the chairman was the speaker at the Oxford Union uh, at Oxford University in the Africa debate titled, Should We Embrace a Closer African Union? where he received a standing ovation. And the chairman was the last and only revolutionary speaker to be invited at Oxford since uh, Malcolm X uh, was invited there 55 years prior on December 3rd, 1964. And in 2021, um, especially if you have been tuned in to the hashtag Omali Taught Me Sunday Studies, you will see that um, you know, the chairman has really presented, uh, had an ideological breakthrough and uh, you know, presented the, the, the understanding that colonialism is the mode of production of capitalist society and world econ economy, which really contextualizes you know, the struggle that we are engaged in. We are you know, fighting to overturn a whole mode of production in colonialism itself. Next slide. In 2022, Chairman Omali Ishitela leads over 55 organizations and institutions which make up the Uhuru movement. Um, and in addition to the countless books and pamphlets that he has written, uh, coupled with keeping uh, in circulation uh, for over 50 years, the oldest revolutionary journal in the US, which is the Burning Spear newspaper. Uh, his greatest accomplishments and the most out outstanding has been the, the development of the revolutionary theory of African internationalism, 
the theory of the African working class and poor peasantry, uh, which leads all of the work of the African People's Socialist Party and also the formation of the African People's Socialist Party itself, which gives the African working class and poor peasantry access to its own leadership, its own interests, its own stature, and its own dignity. Next slide. Relentless, 50 years of leadership towards African redemption. How does the leader of the African nation do all of this? Well, he has a staff. Next slide. The role of the staff of the office of the chair is primarily to be his support system. Our daily tasks include and are not limited to management of the chairman's calendar, assisting with his day-to-day -day activities, consolidating interviews and speaking engagements, arranging travel, disseminating directives to and follow up with other leaders and members of the Ahura movement on the chairman's behalf. In addition to keeping him abreast of upcoming meetings, conferences, where he provides leadership to the entire Uhuru movement and Uhuru movement friendly forces. And we take on any other special assignments as directed by the chairman. Next slide. The staff consists of, of course, our chairman, Omalia Shatella, who is the leader of the African People's Socialist Party USA, the African Socialist International, the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations. He's the chair of the African People's Socialist Party's National Central Committee, as well as the African People's Solidarity Committee, National Central Committee, the leader of the Uhura Movement and leader of the African nation at large. Next slide. And me, I am Ikinge Maele. I'm the chief of staff for Chairman Omalia Shetela. My responsibilities include, but are not limited to, uh, Uhuru Tours Manager for Uhuru Tours and also the NTU Coordinator for the Office of the Chair. Next slide. There's also Alikia Ngoma, who is the Administrative Assistant to the Office of the Chair. She is our Haiti expert for the party. She's also the editor, Haiti editor for the Burning Spear newspaper and soon to be our upcoming public relations team coordinator for the office of the chair. Next slide. There's also Chimaranga Salambao, who's the national director of organization for the African People's Socialist Party who provides daily updates on membership and regional work throughout our movement. Next slide. There's also Timba Shabanda, who will be a member of the public relations team and takes on any other special assignments as directed by Chairman Omali Ishtala. Next slide. Relentless, 50 years of leadership toward African redemption. As crisis of imperialism continues to deepen and the party gets closer to bringing revolution to fruition, being the revolutionary strategist that he is and always seeking to solve the problems of the revolution, Chairman Amalia Shetela instituted a major campaign. Next slide. The term, excuse me, the chairman determined that in this period it was a greater need for him to strengthen our movement and our party to solidify our work on all fronts to prepare to govern. So he called for a restructure of the African People's Socialist Party and its leadership, which had been working under the successful one people, one party, one destiny formation. Next slide. Sharon Omali Ishitawa identified the problems he needed to have greater oversight of the functioning of the whole party. He also needed the African People's Socialist Party National Central Committee to have greater access to each other and the party. And the Uhura movement as a whole needed to have cohesion to all of his great work. The loose, excuse me, the solutions would be that the party would go back to its constitutionally managed, excuse me, mandated structure, which meant a re-implement Mentation of the political bureau. The political bureau is the body that meets, that the chairman leads in between national central committee meetings and provides leadership to the NCC. 
The re-implementation of the standard party agenda was another item to solve the problem. The re-implementation of the political bureau and returning to the standard practice of utilizing the standard party agenda allows party leaders and members to see the whole party at one time, all the time. Next slide. Uhuru. Um, so yes, the first uh, solution that the, the chairman came up with after having those weekly meetings was to reinstitute the constitutionally mandated political bureau of the African People's Socialist Party, um, which consists of, which is the leading body of the National Central Committee and consists of the chairman, deputy chair, director of organization, director of Department of Agitation and Propaganda, and also the chairman added the secretary general of the African Socialist International and the director of organization for Africa. Uh, the political bureau meets at least eight times a year. Um, and it allows for the political bureau to meet at least twice before each NCC meeting, um, which will permit them to have constant summation of the status of the party and the world and what needs to be done in uh, the next period that they are intending to go into. Next slide. So this is a chart that just shows that how, you know, one of the things that the chairman is constantly involved in and has the party constantly engaged in is summing up where we are, just like we are doing in this plenary process. So um, over here at the top, you have the party's Congress, which is the highest uh, body of the African People's Socialist Party, which meets every five years. In between each Congress, uh, the party meets for a plenary, which is held yearly between Congresses. So once a year for four years. Um, and then in between the plenaries, the National Central Committee meets quarterly. So four times a year, and that takes place in between plenaries. And um, in between the National Central Committee meetings, you have the political bureau, which meets at least twice between each NCC meeting, which is eight times a year at minimum. And then of course you have the chairman uh, who 365 a day is you know, thinking about how to solve the problems of the black revolution. Next slide. And uh, this standard party agenda allows to, to bring cohesion to the work of the entire Uhuru movement. It allows all of the work of you know, the party to be in front of its membership and all of the committees all of the time. And it puts the responsibility on you know, all of the parties, um, party and party's leaders to you know, uh, ensure the success of the things that we, we take on, notwithstanding whatever individual assignments and responsibilities that we may have. Next slide. In September, the chairman determined that the party must make a strategic move. The headquarters of the African People's Socialist Party would move to St. Louis, Missouri, where Ferguson had become the epicenter of struggle for not only the US, but for the world with the 2014 police murder of Mike Brown. This would allow him to have greater oversight of the party's tremendous and growing work in St. Louis, Missouri, which currently includes the Black Power Blueprint, the international headquarters of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, and also the African People's Solidarity Movement and our Solidarity Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Next slide. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri is particularly significant, especially in uh, recent years, to the struggle of African liberation, um, you know, because everybody knows about the courageous uprising that took place there after the police murder of 18-year-old Mike Brown. And, you know, since then, a lot of organizations, a lot of people went into St. Louis. Uh, but of all of those organizations, the African People's Socialist Party is the only organization to go into St. Louis after Ferguson and build organization in the interests of the black community and the overall African revolution. Next slide. Relentless, 50 years of leadership toward African redemption. In addition to the theoretical and practical accomplishments under the leadership of Chairman Amalia Chatella, the chairman frequently calls for special webinars on the pressing, excuse me, pressing is questions affecting the African masses worldwide. Next slide. 
Here is just a glimpse of some of these special webinars that were held over the course of 2021, a webinar on Palestine, another commemorative webinar uh, recognizing Glenn Ford, who was a member of the Black Hispanic Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations, which included his daughter, Tanya Rutherford, and also a webinar on Afghanistan. Next slide. Under the relentless leadership of Chairman Omalia Shetela, the African People's Socialist Party, in keeping with its history of hosting African Liberation Day, the party hosted several virtual African Liberation Days in the US and in Europe under the theme, Build the African Workers State. Next slide. Throughout this year, all of the parties, uh, regions and mass organizations has booked the chairman to be the keynote speaker at their webinars. And so some of them include the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project, uh, the African People's Education and Defense Fund, the African Socialist International itself, uh, which is the body of the whole party together, and uh, the African People's Solidar the African People's Socialist Party's Caribbean region um, have all consolidated the chairman this year. Next slide. And um, to continue to deepen the, the demand for reparations, the chairman uh, was a keynote speaker at many of the African People's Solidarity Committees and Uhuru Solidarity Movements special webinars um, you know, to, to take on the question of reparations to African people. Next slide. In support of our brothers and sisters in Haiti, Chairman Amali Ishitela called for several special webinars to sum up uh, things that were taking place there, including the assassination of Jovenel Moise, uh, the August 14, 2021 earthquake, and also uh, the September mass deportations at the Del Rio uh, border in Texas. Next slide. After the news of the uh, over 10,000 Africans who were facing deportation at the Del Rio, Texas border with more than half of them, more than 7,000 of them actually uh, being from Haiti, the chairman mandated that the party's mass organization, the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement uh, hold various press conferences and demonstrations in support of the people of Haiti in di different locations. Next slide. Relentless 50 years of leadership toward African redemption, making African internationalism more accessible to the masses. Next slide. The chairman called for the reprint, production, and di distribution of several of the party's important documents and pamphlets. Uh, many of them you have had the opportunity to purchase earlier uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, uh, which included me and the African People's Socialist Party by Avalita Donaldson, uh, Black Community Control of the Police, which is a 2015 presentation that the chairman made uh, to the Black is Back Coalition. One of my favorites, Forward the Revolutionary African National Democratic Struggle, which was the report that the chairman gave to the 2008 International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement uh, Convention, which was one of the first uh, conventions that I attended that really uh, solidified just my, my desire to want to work further and actually become a member of the African People's Socialist Party. And also in this period, there was a 24 by 36 uh, poster that was produced, which is the party's 14 point platform, what we want, what we believe. Next slide. The chairman's leadership is continually being sought out by not only our media, but the bourgeois media. He has been a featured guest on not only our own Black Power 96.3 radio, but nationally syndicated radio shows, such as the Carl Nelson Show, which is a US syndicated show on Radio One, Conscious Mindset with Said, which is one of the longest running FM radio stations on the KPFT radio network based in Houston, Texas, in addition to I, excuse me, the Iranian Press TV, as well as WPFW, What's at Stake, which is another U.S. syndicated radio uh, station in the U.S. Next slide. 
the chairman continued to uh, has the hashtag Omali taught me Sunday study. And in this year, um, the chairman actually has been engaged in some heavy hitting series, um, uh, which include one African workers of the world unite and organize, putting revolution back on the agenda, the new period, a time for party building, African internationalism on dialectical materialism, and most recently relentless 50 years of leadership toward African redemption. Most of these have been political reports uh, that the chairman has written over the years. Next slide. Chairman Amali Isatella also leads the Black is Black Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations. The Black is Black Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations is a coalition of 18 Black organizations and over eight, 100 members that was founded in 2009. The coalition came together to challenge the confusion caused by the Wall Street selection of Barack Hussein Obama as U.S. president. Thirteen years later, the Black is Black Coalition, under the leadership of Chairman Omali Isatella, continues to provide leadership to Black power politics. Next slide. In April of 2021, the coalition held its fifth electoral campaign school, uh, which is designed to help the African working class understand the process of, of elections and also to take it, you know, um, from being hostage from the African petty bourgeoisie who up until now have completely had the monopoly of, you know, being Africans in the electoral arena. And so uh, it was held on April 9th and 10th, and it was held on April 10th and 11th. And actually on April 9th and 10th of this year, uh, the coalition will be having its sixth electoral campaign school. Next slide. The coalition also held, uh, had a set of special webinars as well to sum up different things that were taking place, um, including one titled Fascism, Neoliberalism and the Way Forward. Uh, there was Free Free Palestine, Debt to Israeli Settler Colonialism and Reefer Madness, Will Legalizing Marijuana Benefit the African Community? Next slide. In addition, the coalition held its 12th annual conference, excuse me, on August 7th and 8th of 2021, uh, where we remembered again, uh, Glenn Ford, who was one of the founding members of the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations. And we also held a day where we honored the uh, political prisoners. And you can see there that some of the special guests uh, that were on that program were Sekou Odinga, Jamal Hart, who was the grandson of Mumia Abu Jamal, Jaleel Matakim, and Jan Laman. Next slide. On November 6th and 7th, uh, the Black is Back held its 13th annual Black People's March on the White House under the same theme from August, uh, deepening the resistance to police terror honoring our political prisoners and prisoners of war, excuse me, black community control of the police. This was both an in-person and virtual conference and it was attended by hundreds of people, uh, both in-person and virtually. Next slide. Uh -huh. The mobilization received significant international media coverage uh, from such sources as Ruptly, which is a Russian video news agency specializing in video on demand based in Berlin, Germany. Uh, the CGTN, China Global Television Network, the International Division of the State Owned Media Organization, uh, headquartered in Beijing. Uh, Yonhap News, um, a major news agency in South Korea. America Press Network Incorporated, a Florida based company. Gaylord News, uh, which is the reporting project of the University of Oklahoma, and Rudders, which is an international news organization established in London by German-born Paul Rudder, and is one of the largest news agencies in the world. Next slide. All right, sorry about that, comrades. I was having problems uh, unmuting. 
Um, and to recognize our comrades who had spent countless years locked away in the death camp called prisons, the coalition uh, produced and distributed over 1,500 free all political prisoner posters and also uh, produced an online petition, which can be found on change.org, which currently has 8,138 signatures. And you too, if you have not signed this, signed this petition, we encourage you to go to change.org, search for Black is Back, demands free all political prisoners. Please sign the petition, share it. You can also go to the Black is Back Coalition.org website and download a shorter version of the petition, which we encourage you to take out into your various communities, neighborhoods, uh, share on your outreach tables. Next slide. On January 8th of this year, the coalition summed up the 2021 political year with a webinar titled Deepening the Struggle Against Colonialism. Next slide. Relentless, 50 years of leadership toward African redemption. The way forward. While the office of the chair has not been without challenges, contradictions, and struggles in 2021, we want to shore up the office. And to do this, next slide. We want to increase the overall staff by working with the national director of organization to increase the administrative capacity of the office. We also want to uh, build the Office of the Chair Public Relations Committee, which will be led by Administrative Assistant Alikia Ngoma. We plan to do this by utilizing the NTU process that was brought to our movement by Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela, and we'll be working closely with the Department of Agitation and Propaganda and the Theory and Writers team and you to increase the visibility of Chairman Omali Shetela and the theory of African internationalism. By utilizing the NTU process, we were able to recruit a volunteer, Africa Ishitella, who brings a wealth of experience and ideas in video production and more. Uh, we want to appreciate Africa for the contributions that she has made thus far and that we, she will continue to make. The Public Relations Committee will need photographers, content creators, writers, and et cetera, all to keep the chairman's social media platforms current, relevant, and far-reaching. In addition, we want to continue the production schedule of more pamphlets and more of the chairman's writings and the countless presentations and videos uh, to disseminate them to the world. And we'll also work vigorously to prepare the chairman, the chairman's schedule to lead us into our first international APSP Congress in Occupy Zania, South Africa in 2023. Next slide. As you can see, the chairman's tour calendar is already beginning to fill up. Next slide. You can request Chairman Omalia Shetela for your college campus, your organization, or your community event by contacting us at info at uhurutours.com. So if you don't haven't booked your date yet, I would encourage you to get your request in now. Uhuru, next slide. We want to thank you and everyone for joining us for the third plenary of the seventh Congress of the African People's Socialist Party. This has been the report from the office of Chairman Omalia Shetela. We say salute to Chairman Omalia Shetela, Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela, to the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Salute to over 50 years of relentless leadership. Uhuru!